everyone, real quick before we get to the hunt, we just want to let you know about an exciting event that we have coming up really soon. And we're calling it Pick Up Public Lands Day. And on March 2nd, we're encouraging people all across the country to get out on public lands and pick up as much trash as you can to help clean up these properties that we all share and enjoy. So we're going to have two crews of THP members, one in Springfield, Missouri, and another in Columbus, Ohio. And we're going to be out there picking up trash on public lands. And then at 3 p.m. local time, we will be hosting in-person meetups at the Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri, and then at the Cabela's in Columbus, Ohio. We'll be giving away some prizes for both in-person and online participation. And there's a link in the description of this video that goes to a landing page on our website that has all the information about the event, the prizes, and how you can participate. So let's get out there and make a difference and help clean up our public lands. <laughs> <laughs> a wild turkey gobble, in my opinion at least, is one of the greatest sounds in the natural world. It ranks right up there with... But for as much as we discuss our love for this vocalization and the importance of being able to gauge the distance and direction of a gobble, which we don't always agree on, it begs the question, how far away can you actually hear a turkey gobble? Obviously, it depends on how good your ears are, as well as the landscape and a host of environmental factors. But last spring, while hunting out west, I had the perfect conditions to find out precisely how far I can hear a turkey gobble. And well, it was surprising to say the least. Well, I'm heading right into the middle of it here. Got some rain to drive through here, but I'm heading west, gonna meet up with Ted and Grant. My plan for today is to go to an area close to where they're hunting. Gonna see if there's any birds in that area, see what there is for hunting pressure. But the nice thing is it's finally starting to look and feel like spring, things are greening up a little bit. It was a really tough winter out here, out in the western states. In some areas, the snow had just finally melted off in the last week or so. You know, I've been talking to my neighbor who uh, does a lot of turkey hunting out west. He said the birds are behind where they normally would be at this time of the year. They're still in low country, in big groups and they've just finally started to spread out you know up into the higher ground and hopefully up into the public lands where we're going to have the opportunity to hunt should roll in late afternoon give me some time to drive around see if i can get eyes on birds rainy weather like this maybe they'll be more inclined to be out in the open and then the wind should die down towards sunset and hopefully get ears on something for the morning that's a nice bucket running along with me here That's awesome, I love that. Drop the pin where those are at. I think Ted, Ted should draw a pretty good antelope tag this year. I don't know if he'll hunt this area, but that's a dandy buck. Well, it's about 7.30 right now. Been driving around trying to get eyes on birds. I thought maybe with this rain, it would get them out in the open, be a little bit more visible, but haven't seen or heard anything yet. So I'm gonna get on a high point on this county road and listen back into the public land, see if I can hear anything that way, and then drive back around to the access point, maybe walk back in a little bit and see if I can hear one that uh, is potentially gobbling late. And that's if there's even anything on this public land. Like I said, the way the winter was and you know just the spring being late, I'm assuming there's birds that have moved back up in here or have possibly wintered in here, but you just don't know. It was such an extreme winter, it's hard to say exactly where the birds are at right now, but I would think they should be starting to get back up into this higher country. There we go. That I probably wouldn't have been able to hear from the road. They're just on the edge of how far I can hear. I mean, they're pretty faint, so they're over a mile back in. Because when it gets, when they're so faint, when they're so far away like that, it can be hard to tell, you know, what direction they are from you. So I just turned in different directions and tried to get a better sense of what ear that I'm hearing them out of. You know, if they're on this closest ridge, that's one and a quarter miles. And it's, it sounds like they could even very well be over that onto the next ridge, you know, between, you know, 1.3, 1.4 miles away. I mean, that is a long ways to hear a gobble. You know, I've kind of got a line on them, don't have an exact pinpoint of where they're at. They're just too far away to 
to really pin down. But they're gobbling good and should be gobbling good in the morning. You can tell it's starting to clear off. It'll be nice, cool, crisp morning, light winds. And the nice thing about Merriams is they typically start gobbling pretty early to the point where you know, I can get back up in there in a the general area and then once they start gobbling, move in on them.
typical Merriams, gobbling at everything you throw at him while he's moving away. It's fun to listen to him, though, but he didn't want to commit, that's for sure. I don't think there's any major obstructions between me and him. He just didn't want to come over here. Probably has been called at a time or two. Possible he'd been getting whooped up on as well. It sounds like there's another bird down in the creek bottom with the hens down there. Could be a satellite bird that hanging around the group. Well, it's almost seven o'clock right now. I just made another setup on that bird. After I set up on him originally, he went down low, and that's where I heard other turkeys this morning. So anyways, I looped around, down low, made another setup, called to him, he gobbled a couple times, but he wasn't quite as responsive as he was on the limb. But anyways, he started drifting away down through that creek bottom and then got up on that ridge. Last time I heard him gobble, he was getting up on this long ridge that kind of loops around. So I'm trying to get ahead of him here to get up on top and then start working back towards him. There's a high point up here that I would imagine that he'll eventually work towards. And that's where I want to try to get to, but I got to get going here. I've had two good setups and called at him and he's, he's went away both times, but he's gobbling enough that I can keep track of him, which is good. I don't know that I'm gonna call at him much more, but if I can get ahead of him here, that would be ideal. It's a high point of this ridge right here. I assume he's probably two, 250 yards from here. I wanna be careful though. I haven't heard him gobble for a minute. on his own. I think I can get another 50 or so.
Got him. Oh man, that was awesome. Down this narrow little ridge right here, that was perfect. That hide was perfect too. I'll show you that in a second, but look at that. Just that big, beautiful tail fan. Love it. Looked like, it, yeah, got a little barring and a couple of his tail feathers as well. Took a couple hours, but I finally caught up to him. I heard this bird gobble, I don't know how many times this morning. I mean, he was just hammering on the roost when he got down. Then he finally started to gobble a little bit less, but it was just enough that I could keep track of him. Then he kind of drifted his way down through that creek bottom and then got up on this, this long, narrow ridge right here. And it was really the ideal setup to where I could get next to this little pine tree, cedar tree, had front cover, back cover, drape, of course. And then, you know, this leafy suit, you know, I blended in really well. And I figured this would be the ideal spot to call him in or just kind of have him naturally work up this way. And since I'm not using a decoy, that's kind of what I'm looking for is a spot where if they're coming to the call, looking for the call, you know, as soon as they step out, they're already within gun range or close to within gun range. So as he was standing there, I was ranging, you know, in 10 yard increments and I kept coming up with about mid forties. It was a little bit hard to tell down low. You know, I could tell that just by his size and just by the distance I was coming up with that he was within effective gun range. He stood there and he was standing there for a long time, head up, no obstructions between me and him. And as you can see, it, it rocked him, put him right down. Just can't beat it. What a beautiful spot to shoot a Merriam's here on this long, narrow ridge. Just awesome. So last night when I was listening from back at the access point at the truck, I was talking about how far away you can hear a turkey gobble. And from where I was at and to where the bird was roosted, I got a pinpoint on that. Let's see how far away I was hearing him. 1.44 miles from where I was standing to where this bird was roosted. Almost one and a half miles. And that was on the edge of how far I could hear him. It was just the faintest gobble. And the only way that's happening is when it's dead calm. And the interesting thing is it was about the same distance that I was listening from the road, but it was over a couple of big ridges. So I wasn't hearing them. But when I came back to the access point and only had, you know, this one ridge right here in between me and the birds, then I was able to hear them. Cause they would have been, let's see, I'll measure from where I was listening on the road, 1.34 miles. You know, from that direction, they were several ridges back and down in. So it just kind of, it goes to show the importance of, you know, listening from multiple locations because you're not going to always hear everything from, from one spot, especially when the, you're listening at those kinds of distances, a mile plus. That is awesome, man. I'm, I'm fired up. That was, that was fun. Had a feeling this morning if I brought my frame pack and all my camping gear back in here that I would shoot a bird right away and wouldn't get the chance to camp back in here. And this has been something I've wanted to do for a while now is backpack camping and, and going in and hunting turkeys that way, just taking everything on your back and going in for you know a couple days or something like that. Nothing too extreme, but that was the plan, was to camp and just try to stay on these turkeys. But I was very fortunate to end up tacking out a little earlier than I thought maybe I would. And now, pack everything out and go see how Ted and Grant are doing.